everyone. This is Michael Romali here with the Hurricane Alcan session for July 15th, 2020, recorded around 12.27 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look here at the latest sea surface temperature anomalies last updated as of yesterday, not much has changed, although we continue to see this persistent area of cooling out here in the equatorial Pacific now uh, approaching the Nino 4 area, which is all the way out across this area. And this will likely persist throughout the next several weeks to months as we will likely head closer and closer towards a La Nina base state. Again, this is the developing cool neutral look towards a La Nina base state over the next several weeks or so. In the meantime, the Atlantic main development region continues to warm with the western uh, wind anomalies blowing across this area, helping to cause a downwelling effect. This will undoubtedly warm the Atlantic basin uh, more than it is now. In some cases now, a whole about half a degree Celsius above the long-term average in some of these areas very warm, very active Atlantic hurricane season expected for this year. Again, even persisting all the way into the subtropical Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, all of those areas are well above the long-term average. And to further this, this is the uh, European uh, EPS 850 millibar zonal wind anomalies, basically, ba excuse me, basically taking a look here at what's going to be occurring over the next several weeks or so. Uh, this is basically J uh, July 15th as of today. And this correlates roughly to the eastern Pacific Basin out here. Uh, these blues are easterly winds and the reds and oranges are your westerly winds. And there is a, another very significant uh, upwelling effect in easterly wind event that's going to be occurring mainly uh, across the Nino 3.4 region and into the Nino 4 region. This is a rough correlation to that part of the world, and that is going to cause a very significant uh, upwelling effect that's going to cool off this area even further. That's going to help cool off this area and this area even further. That is going to cause this area to likely head very close towards a La Nina Bay State and for that reason, there is a La Nina watch that is now in effect for this area as this is going to get fairly close to La Nina thresholds by the time we get into the fall and winter of this year. Meantime, we continue to see in the Atlantic Basin, we, uh, we will see these westerly winds continue to persist and dominate uh, really throughout the rest of the month out here. This correlates roughly to the western Atlantic Basin and over Africa. This will continue to promote a warming of the main development region, and it's only going to continue to go downhill from there. And if we take a look here at the upper ocean heat content uh, valid as of this morning, again, everywhere I'm highlighting right here has enough upper ocean heat content to support tropical cyclones. And you notice now how that's really coming now into the, the main development region, the Cabo Verde Islands. And we talked about this, how this area was going to, in fact, be one of those uh, areas that's going to warm quite substantially over the last, uh, over the next few weeks or so. And that is very well showing up here, nicely correlating now into the main development region. And for reference, uh, this is out here in the Caribbean and the, uh, you know, Gulf of Mexico and the Bahamas, Southwestern Atlantic. Really, once you start getting into these lighter shades of greens all the way up here to the darker reds and oranges here, that's your really deep upper ocean heat content, which is very pronounced out here near the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, and uh, near Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula, all the way into the Gulf of Mexico out here, the Bahamas. Uh, and even towards the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, uh, you know, those areas are seeing very deep upper ocean heat content numbers. This is basically a measure of the water content depth. How deep does that 80 degree isotherm go down in the water? And once you start getting into these reds, oranges, you know, darker, you know, or lighter shades of green, basically, this is basically showing where your latent heat release potential is the most uh, prevalent at. And where these tropical cyclones really have uh, really have a potential to really strive, which is way down here in the Caribbean and even the Gulf of Mexico, even. But you notice basically everywhere I'm highlighting has enough upper ocean heat content to support intense tropical cyclones, and that is very prevalent, especially out here in the western main development region, out here in the western half of the basin. We've been talking about 
about this. It's only July the 15th, and this is only going to continue to get warmer and more prevalent from here. So watch out for when the real season begins here shortly. And again, if we take a look here at the sea uh, surface temperatures, this is basically the, the temperatures at the very surface of the water, the very skin uh, t temperatures here at the surface. Again, you know, we're seeing mainly here in the Western Basin, about, you know, 31 to 30, you know, 30 to 31 Celsius out here. Very warm water temperatures. Of course, you know, if you have something traversing this area in the, the Atlantic Basin, even up through the Gulf Stream out here, this is going to provide a very significant problem. I mean, this is basically shooting a runway, you know, I, I would hate to say runway, but it is kind of uh, pinpointing a runway basically in this area. It is very, very warm. And now we're starting to see the rest of the basin kind of fill in too with, you know, 28 to 29 Celsius water temperatures off the Yucatan, where, you know, earlier this year, you know, it was kind of about 26 Celsius. Now that's about 28, 28, 29 Celsius off the coast here of the Western Antilles and Barbados, about 28 to 29 Celsius out here in the southern MDR about 27 to 28 Celsius so very warm all in all this area now is more than supportive of intense tropical cyclones and hurricanes and again this is going to support the theory and the overlasting of theory that this area is going to be primed and probably more active as we head in towards the month of August and beyond. Now, what's actually going on here? Well, this is the College DuPage Cod Meteorology Go 16 satellite viewer. Again, the wide over shot here of some of the uh, Eastern Pacific Basin and the Southeastern Pacific and the majority of the Atlantic Basin in Africa. Again, starting from left to right here, not a lot going on out here in the Eastern Pacific that will likely now remain quiet uh, for the time being. Again, uh, Tropical Depression 6E actually dissipated yesterday. No significant concerns uh, at this time for any Eastern Pacific uh, you know, land threat at all. In the Atlantic Basin, this is a very interesting upper level low off the uh, coast here of uh, you know, the Cape here and off the Massachusetts area, New England, uh, certainly you know, Boston, in those areas. Uh, this is just a very small little, small in relative terms, but it's a, you know, small upper level low that's kind of just drifting around here. Water temperatures, and if we kind of jump back here, water temperatures are not very warm up here. So no, no real threat for this to actually transition into a tropical cyclone. This is kind of combined with an over, uh, overrun of a frontal boundary right here so we kind of see this cold front right here with a little bit of a warm a warm front kind of dripping out like here and an occluded front kind of caving back into it more of an occluded front that runs through here within a low pressure system that's kind of sitting right through there so we have uh, roughly this kind of as our little cool front this is our little warm front that's kind of draped in through here and then we have much of an occlusion process out here that's kind of tapering off out there so we're not really expecting this to actually become a tropical cyclone at all for the most of the, the remainder of the basin we see a fairly strong dry air this up uh, this large area of saharan air and just dry mid-level air in the atmosphere that's very indicative of this kind of cumulus field over here very strong dry air preventing much in the way of any tropical development out here but if you look Right down here, what do we notice across this whole entire uh, southern MDR? This is a very strong wave axis associated with the intertropical convergence zone. And right in through here, we take this uh, attention kind of in a broader scale here. We go really down into the nitty gritty of this system. Again, there is some cyclonic turning in the atmosphere. Now, again, some of the lower level clouds today are actually trying to get a little bit pulled in towards uh, the actual where the, our inferred area of circulation and cyclonic vorticity is and that is very important because that does suggest that there might be a lower level vortex that is trying to develop across this area now that is not implying that there is one but there could be a little bit of a lower level vortex that is located in through here and that could uh, eventually try to spin something down closer to the surface where we actually have a surface vortex somewhere in here now Currently, there is just a broad mid-level vortex associated with the intertropical convergence zone that is kind of getting pulled up like this. This is kind of the intertropical convergence zone that's being pulled up like that. 
inducing some cyclonic vorticity in the atmosphere. Again, you notice though there is very strong dry air that is getting uh, pushed to the south here. You notice some in some of these low level cloud features and these kind of these cumulus clouds, they're getting entrained into whatever circulation is down here. This would uh, wrap in a lot of the uh, energy down here and a lot of the dry air would wrap into the center uh, if any surface vortex would form and any mid-level vortex, it would start to wrap up here and end up becoming uh, overrun with this dry, stable Saharan air over uh, Africa and the Cabo Verde Islands, which is positioned right here. So again, that is one thing we'll be watching over the next several days or so, that whether or not this actually ends up developing a surface vortex in through here. And if it does, uh, how strong can this get and can it close off? Right now, you can see a very elongated area. This is a fairly... A elongated area of vorticity. You notice how there is uh, on the back side of this, there's kind of that turning on the back side of it, and there's kind of that cyclonic turning in there. But this is implying a rather broad area of low pressure. This is not really implying a closed low level center that we would like to see for a tropical cyclone. And again, this is likely to remain an open wave over the next few days as this generally traverses in the Western Atlantic Basin and becomes of no significant land concern at all. Now, what is interesting, though, this is the tropical cyclone forecast tracks over the next 10 days coming from the European uh, EPS, uh, basically the ensembles here. And this is valid as of uh, this morning or uh, valid as of last night here. Uh, but the zero Z run here from the European ensembles, again, it does imply that there is some tropical cyclone genesis tracks that do show up down here primarily as a result of this broader area of low pressure. And if we kind of move back here to the wider Atlantic shot here, this is actually the sun right over here. You kind of kind of contract that sun moving from left to right here or yeah, from right to left. Very interesting and intriguing in the satellite imagery here. But you do notice that again, this is what's prompting those cyclone tracks, this area of generalized disturbed weather as it moves over the next several days west northwestward and that will eventually uh, end up here somewhere in the lesser Antilles over the next few days or so but that is not expected to become a tropical cyclone although you know this is interesting that the tracks are starting to show up as a generalized kind of clustering of the tracks down here nothing out here these are just kind of you know little spin-off areas in in the the, Euro the european but we're not really seeing a very consistent trend of course we'll wait to see what the 12z trend is later this afternoon but again we're not really seeing much but there is some consensus for a tropical for a very strong tropical wave to exit off of africa and that is likely this wave over here at, over the next few days as it generally persists over towards the west northwest here but no significant land concerns. This is not expected to develop at all, but we will be watching it here over the next several days or so. So that will be that. And to furthermore, this point, this is the uh, GFS 850 millibar zonal wind anomalies, basically what we we're taking a look here at the very beginning of the, uh, the video here, but this is in a much uh, nicer kind of graph form here. Again, what we're looking at here is the westerly or the easterly winds showing up in the purples here and the westerly winds showing up in this orange and reddish colors here. The westerly winds over the Atlantic Basin persist uh, really over the next uh, six to ten days or so before we might get a little bit of a westerly wind event or an easterly wind rather. But again, over the next about uh, five to nine days or so, we will likely continue to see these westerly winds continue uh, over a large sector of the main development region of the Atlantic Basin. This will continue to promote a very strong uh, warming signal out here in the main development region. Again, these water temperatures are already warming up quite substantially, and this will warm up even further as we go on throughout time. Again, this will promote also, this is uh, the European 850 millibar zonal wind anomalies. And again, this continues to persist all the way out to the 25th of July here, all the way out through the main development region. This would also continue to persist and promote a cyclonic vorticity component in the wind. And if we take a look at that here in the 850 millibar zone, uh, the 850 millibar vorticity, notice all of these westerly winds out here. These are westerly winds in the atmosphere. This uh, promotes cyclonic vorticity out in this region. 
and is favorable and conductive to tropical cyclone formation. Although, of course, dry mid-level air in this region out here is going to really prevent much in the way of development. But if we take a look here at the GFS forecast, uh, the 850 millibar uh, winds here, again, very interesting that this area tries to close off and consolidate into a uh, what is presumably a tropical cyclone uh, before eventually kind of getting caught in that dry air. You see this another prevalent wave out here. So the time is coming. And again, I mean, this is a very sprawling area of high pressure out through here that would tend to send these waves around this area. Of course, they can't just turn, you know, on out to sea. We'll kind of highlight this in red here. Again, this whole area of persistent ridging would really promote these tropical waves. They can't just come out here and turn out into this. That we is denied. These cyclones, uh, in fact, then trend closer to the islands. And that is a signature and a recipe for landfalling tropical cyclones as we head towards the remainder of the year. So again, the bottom line is we do now have something of interest to watch out here in the main development region of the Atlantic Basin over the next several days or so that will generally head uh, off towards the west-northwest, eventually getting caught in this drier mid-level air and weakening. So we should not see a development pattern in this, although this will be very interesting to watch over the next several days or so. Again, we do have this one wave to watch, and then after that, the tropics will remain quiet probably uh, for the next several weeks or so, uh, heading into the month of August. And then beyond that, it does look to be a very active Atlantic hurricane season this year. So again, a lot to talk about here, but... Again, we do look to remain quiet, so take this time to prepare now while you still have time. And for sure, we will be watching everything here over the next several days or so. All right? Well, that is going to be it for me today. Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll see you guys back here then tomorrow afternoon. Stay safe, everyone, and have a nice day.